cool. I'm so excited about this video. Um, welcome guys to our newest YouTube video. And this is all about um, marathon training. So we've got the Cape Town Marathon on the 15th of October. This 15th, yeah. 15th of October this year. And um, I've got some big goals for it. So let's get into it. Today's video is a little bit of an update of where I am currently in my training, um, what I've been doing in the past couple of weeks. It's also a bit of a breakdown of how I am approaching my marathon training. And then I'm also answering a couple of the questions that I've received quite often over the past couple of weeks. So this will be the first video of three that we were making about the Cape Town Marathon and I hate the word journey but my journey towards it and so prepping and then as well as running for it. If you would like to see more like day-to-day -day updates or daily updates I do quite a bit on my Instagram so yeah you can just yeah follow along with with what I'm doing on there. So a bit of a marathon update um so like I said I've got the race on the 15th of October, so that's literally in seven weeks. Um, the only race I'm gonna do prior to that will be the gun run in the next three weeks. So that'll be like mid-September, and my reasoning behind that is basically having that as a gauge of where I am fitness and speed-wise, and I'll basically use it as like a speedy long run, so like a quality long run session. So um, yeah, I love the gun runs. I'm very excited to run that. Um, I'm basically halfway in my training at the moment. I'm doing like a 14 week lead up to the marathon. So it's not like I started with zero fitness. I've been coming out of, you know, three or four years that I've been consistently running and had the two oceans at the beginning of this year. So I do have a very strong base, but I did take a bit of time with lower, like a lower running frequency um throughout say may june july um yeah so in the past seven weeks we've been building on our base fitness or building on my base fitness um and that makes that basically means i wanted to get stronger so i have been still being incorporating strength training i've been making sure that i spend time on my feet and then also to ensure that i can maintain a low heart rate over a long distance um so that's basically where i am at the moment this will be my fourth marathon and i have a very very ambitious goal time i'm really um nervous to say it um so i might sneak it in the later in the video but i've got a very very ambitious goal time so this time around i got a coach to guide me throughout the whole process and i've been absolutely loving it i've been having so much fun with the training um and just having the the confidence and just doing these sessions and knowing that he's looking after all of the other metrics of you know my fatigue and my sleep and my nutrition and helping me with my running form and all those other things so that's been a real big game changer for me So I had no idea what shoes I'm going to be running with. Um, these are my absolute favorite. They are the Hoka Carbon X 2s. They're discontinued and the new ones doesn't really work for me. And I had no idea what I was going to do um, because my other shoes have been run completely through. And this girl just messaged me on Instagram saying that she's got a pair of number sevens, um, or like size sevens. And it's too small for her if I would just like to have them so she just gave me these pair of, pair of shoes and now I'm sorted for the race so I'm just so happy about it so thank you Emma you're an absolute lifesaver I know I've thanked you a million times but you've got no idea um, I'm gonna run my PB in these shoes okay so I'm about seven weeks into my like proper training schedule um, almost I think about halfway through the marathon training so up until now, um, we've been working on building my base, making sure that I've got a good, strong base, like fitness-wise and strength-wise to work from for the rest of um, the training season, or like the training months. 
um, yeah, from now on, the sessions are gonna increase in um, like speed and in intensity and everything. So with that will be today's tempo session. So I'm a little bit nervous, <laughs> it's gonna be a hard one. Um, but yeah, the next seven weeks up until marathon training is gonna be, uh, up until the actual marathon is gonna be full on. Today's session is a 5k time trial, but the total distance will be like a 10k run. So starting off with a 3k warm up. So in this time I want to keep my heart rate really low, make sure that my body warms up before I get into like the faster tempo um, pace. Then the 5k is in the middle. It's yeah, like I said, a time trial, so it's going to be at a really fast pace. This will be like zone four five type of run so this is like pushing your heart rate up to like the high 160s 170s but it should be a pace that i can maintain for the whole five kilometers i don't want to go out in a big old sprint and then fade for the last two kilometers of the 5k so this will just give us a good indication of where my fitness is at the moment and also um, as a workout, it makes sure that I increase my VO2 max and my lactate threshold, which means that my muscles can maintain this high speed for a long time. And then from there on, it's a 2K cooldown, so 10Ks in total, um, but it's a big session, like I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> my fourth marathon and I've been training consistently for four years and this is the first year I'm actually prioritizing stretching which please don't be mad at me coach <laughs> but um, yeah I've never really realized the importance of warming up your body and making sure that you um, get your muscles activated before you actually start running and for the first time I'm not injured like prior to the marathon so yeah um, I'm gonna head out for the run now it's a chilly morning, um, but luckily not as cold as my Tuesday run. Tuesday I ran in the like heavy wind, rain, coldest weather I can think of. But it's so, so, so important to still run and still go out for your run, even if the weather's not that great, um, because you don't know what race day weather's gonna be like, you know? If you wake up race morning and it's freezing cold and raining, you need to know that you've prepared for this and that you know exactly how you are going to you know um, perform in those kind of conditions so i know sometimes you need to go on the treadmill when it's dark and it's too cold and it's you know really bad outside but um if you can do your runs outside you won't be sorry about it i know you're going to ask me about this set um with my training i always make sure that i test out our samples to make sure that they are the absolute best so this is a new short, new short style, absolutely love it. And then this is like one of our um, new bras that we will most likely keep in stock all the time. It's our, you know, Milan bra that everyone absolutely loves, but in like more sleek, monotone look. So um, I'm ready to go. I'll see you guys later. The real pace man is, you must remember, <laughs> I just built a whole warm up.
<laughs> no, it was good. I'm happy with the bases that I hit. But I'm not going to say that's easy. Um, it's definitely the longest that I've held like a very fast pace in this training block. It's definitely not my PB in a 5k, but I think I did well. I'll check my splits and I'll post it on you um, if you guys are interested. But all in all, just like over 10k's and um, yeah, now I'm just going to catch my breath first. So, for this is my fourth marathon and for the first three and all the other races I've ever done I've basically like trained myself, read a lot about different training programs and different ways of training and everything um, but yeah I basically trained myself and I think I didn't do like a bad job but um, for this race I have a very ambitious goal um, so I decided to get myself a coach um, because I also think the fact that I was doing marathons and running them quite fast training myself there wasn't someone who was able to have a look at my stats and my fatigue and my performance and all those things as well um, and that's probably the reason why I got injured um, before my two previous marathons um, so I did this podcast with um, making a runner and I met Nick who is a coach and a biogeneticist and then I contacted him to be my coach for this marathon and it's been the most incredible thing I've ever done um, there's so much that goes into running that I didn't even know about and I think the progress that I've made over the past couple of weeks have been exponentially better than what it would have been if I would have trained myself um, and with that he also makes sure that I rest and he helps me with my running form and you know my nutrition and everything like that so I'm really excited to see what happens um, in this marathon with me having a coach so with mentioning that that I got a coach now it's if you're at a space where you are running your first or second marathon or you're just getting into running don't worry about getting a coach like from the start there's so much value in building a base and getting to know your body um, by yourself so if you guys want let me know if you would like some more guidance on setting up like a basic running program for yourself um, whether it be for a 10k half marathon or a full marathon um, there's a lot of knowledge that I built up over the past couple of years that I can really and I love sharing it I'm just so excited about running so um, if you guys need a little bit of guidance let me know and I can maybe put something together um, for like a getting you into running or getting you into racing okay so a question I got asked quite a bit is how to choose your goal I'm guessing if it's like your first marathon you're not exactly sure where to like put your finishing time your pace or anything so it's a really, it's not like a one size fits all type of thing, but there is a bit of a rule of thumb. So your half marathon time times two plus half an hour. Um, so say for example, your PB for a half marathon is two hours. I would say double it, so that's four hours and plus half an hour, so that's 4.30. That would be like a good time to just get that first marathon um, done. And then from there on, you can always improve. Um, it's a big thing to run your first marathon. It's a distance you've never done before. It's at a pace you've, you know, not maintained for such a long time before. So it is challenging, um, but you also know your body and you also know the type of um, pace that you can maintain. And your first marathon, the only goal is to finish and to finish without getting yourself injured. So that should be your first goal. With that being said, um, this being my fourth marathon, I have a massive goal and I know that I've said this before and I wasn't going to share it with anyone because I'm a little bit scared of like sharing it and then maybe not reaching it but I'm confident that I will um, so for this marathon I'm going to aim to qualify for Boston which means that I need to run sub 3 hours 50 so my previous PB was um, 339, 339. Um, so I need to shave about 10 minutes off this marathon time of mine. So that brings me like at a pace of 
4 minutes 55 a k of the 42 kilometers. So it's a big goal. Um, like I said, I'm confident that I'm going to reach it, but it's going to be really, really tough. Um, so yeah, that's my goal. So please, I die in first May. <laughs> my training split at the moment is four runs a week. Um, I'll go into a little bit more depth of what those are. And then I'm doing two Pilates sessions and then one strength training session. So the four runs that I do a week um, is basically I just run with my coach told me but the big like guideline around that is to have a one or two quality sessions so this would be sprints or heels or tempo um, runs these type of workouts increase your strength your running efficiency your vo2 max your lactate threshold it's really important to ensure that you add speed sessions into your training and then i do one long run normally on a saturday at the moment my long runs are like two and a half hours long they yeah i reach about 28 yeah 28 29 k's and then i do um one or two easy runs depending on the rest of my week and then the pilates has just been incredible for me you guys all know i love that and then the strength training just to make sure that i am that my body enables me to run as fast and as strong as i possibly can okay so it's Sunday morning and I'm heading off to my um, long run for this week so I've got a two and a half hour run um, on the menu today and it's all about running nice and slow getting that distance on my legs and um, the focus today is to keep a consistent cadence and then also to keep my heart rate nice and low. Okay I'm at 10 almost 11 k's into my long run and then um, my focus here is to make sure that I run in a consistent, efficient cadence. So my cadence is definitely too low, meaning I take too few steps in a minute. And um, the trick that I have, or that my coach gave me, is to make sure that I put my hips forward, my chest tall, and make sure that I don't overextend my bottom leg and put my foot down right below my knee. So I've been concentrating on that during this run. All halfway done with my long run for today. So I've run like an hour and 15, just under 14 kilometers and just finished like a 2K heel all the way from um, the 12 Apostles to like almost 800 meters from Andarno's exit. Um, felt really good on the hill, I must say. Um, obviously, my heart rate spiked um, with me trying to keep my heart rate low on a long run but felt really strong on the hill which I'm glad about the two uh, what's that race the gun run <laughs> um, in the next two weeks has about a 2k hill in the middle so I know that I can definitely keep a nice and strong pace there and then it's easy going or easy sailing from there but yeah, so heading off for the next, say another 14 k's um, and that would be my long run for today. It's the most beautiful day in Cape Town, there's no wind, it's not too hot but you can see that I am sweating. Um, I don't mind it though, I love the summer heat. Anyway, let's get going. taking my last towel. I'm about 45 minutes to the end of my run so this guy will sustain me for the last little bit. This one is the Mihita play bit, the power ball hydro towel, definitely one of my favorites. Okay, so I just finished my long run, um, two and a half hours, I ended up on like 27 and a half kilometers. Um, and I just realized again how important these like slow long runs are. I mean, I just stopped about a minute ago. And I'm not out of breath, um, feeling really good like fitness wise, but my legs are so tired. And I mean, um, in a full marathon, there'll be another 15 or so kilometers left. So getting my legs used to this load and this consistent like 
pounding the pavement um, type movement. Like it's a very repetitive thing to run such a long distance, you know, you're just keeping up step after step. Um, and getting my legs used to that while building this base is just so important. Um, I think where the penny completely dropped for me with um, making sure that I do these slower runs. Like previously I just ran as far as I could, as fast as I could every single time. Um, but I read this quote saying, um, you have to build your engine before you can press on the gas. So that just made so much sense for me. Like I need to have this engine um, built over a long time, you know, before I actually do my marathon where I'm gonna run this distance at a fast pace. So anyway, oh, look at my glasses. Anyway, um, I'm gonna have a bit of a stretch. Definitely gonna have a lot to eat. I'm super hungry. And um, yeah, and then it's the most beautiful sunny day in Cape Town. I get quite a lot of questions about how you approach training, especially, you know, if you're not being coached or someone doesn't help you choose your paces. Um, so basically what we use is heart rate training and this is something that's used globally by so many different runners um, and it is something that is the base of my sessions if you don't want to go into too deep of a calculation how you can make sure that you're running in a certain zone by literally just using this little trick so imagine you're running with a running buddy um so your zone one will be if you two are running you can maintain a completely normal conversation like nothing's changed just very easy like a normal pace then zone two means you can run ugh, speak full paragraphs to your friend so in three is you're running at a speed which you can answer full sentences, but you need to take a bit of a break between each sentence. So in four is a speed where you can manage single words. You're running lack of fast and you're quite tired, but single words you'll be able to get out. And then zone five is you're running so fast that you literally cannot speak at all. So basically zone one and two is where you want to stay for your long runs. Zone four is where you want to be for your tempo run, so a high pace uh, for a longer distance, like um, five to eight K distance. And then zone five is where you will be while you are doing your sprints. The wind is a little bad, so I hope you can hear me. It's the week after the long run that I posted. Um, I'm on a one day. I'm on a one hour easy run and um, to be completely honest, <laughs> I actually thought that I was running nice and slow on long runs and my previous easy runs, but I had a chat with my coach and <laughs> I'm still running a little bit too fast on my easy runs. So today, it feels like I'm shuffling, but you have to run slow to run fast. So the, besides looking at your heart rate, things like that, um, a good rule of thumb is taking your race pace, your ideal race pace, and adding a full on minute, <laughs> a minute to 90 seconds, and that would be the ideal pace at which you should do your easy runs. So yeah, my second easy run for the week. It's low. <laughs> um, feels a little weird because I am a little competitive and I am very aware of what's posted on Strava. <laughs> so I need to put my ego aside and literally just take it easy. Anyway, beautiful morning. A little bit cold, a little bit windy. It's always a good morning in Cape Town. <laughs> I'm aware. <laughs> I just ran past them. Um, marathon legend Carlos Sain. And um, yo, I'm not sure what she's doing, Cape Town, but a little bit starstruck. <laughs> Look, um, oh, she's just amazing. 550, about 50 a kilometer. And um, to be honest, I didn't have a coach get me in line. <laughs> I probably would have gone for like a five minutes a K pace for 10k. Um yeah. It's just so much to learn. <laughs>
Okay, look at those heart rates. Very nice and low, very nice and easy. Happy with that. A question that, that I get asked a lot is how to balance strength training, running, and then also rest and recovery. Um, it is a really difficult one. It takes some time to figure out exactly what your body can handle and what it can't do. So it is really important to listen to your body. Um, so while training for a marathon or a race, um, I'm normally run dominant. Definitely those are my dominant sessions. Um, otherwise, if I'm not training for a specific race, it's very 50-50. With my current running schedule, my running is taking priority. And so I've explained the different sessions that I do there. But with the strength training, the intention with that is to make sure that I can run stronger. Um, the second thing is so that I avoid injuries. The stronger your muscles are, the more they are going to support your body and your goals. In a time that I'm training for a marathon, I won't gym as heavy like with as heavy weights as what I do if I'm not training for a specific race. The goal with that is I don't want to be so sore and so fatigued from a gym training session that my quality session is not, you know, what I want it to be. So I would rather gym a little lighter, still getting that extra strength training in, but not in such a way that I don't hit my certain paces and my distance that I need to do in my quality sessions. Um, and then I normally have one recovery day a week. Um, it's normally on a Monday because my weekends are quite run heavy. So on a recovery day, I'll go for a walk. Um, I'll even do a Pilates session, but it is a time that I need to make sure that my body is getting rest in. Um, yeah, so those are basically you need to balance this in your life and I know that it's it's a difficult thing to to say listen to your body because sometimes you don't know should I push through this little bit of laziness that I have or am I actually so tired that I'll be doing more damage or more harm than good by you know running a session so what I normally do when I'm not exactly sure whether I'm tired or lazy is I put on my running shoes and I just go out for a easy run so you will very quickly realize after like 10 minutes of running or two kilometers or something that either you've like shaken your laziness and you're getting into a rhythm and you actually really enjoy that run or you are so tired and then you just stop and have a walk like a recovery walk instead so just go out start for an easy run and you will actually your body will tell you um, after about two kilometers, which way this session is going to go. On to nutrition. I will definitely go more into like race specific nutrition closer to race day. So that will most likely be in my next video because I know this is such a, a difficult thing to figure out. So I'll definitely give you my tips and tricks. But for now, while I'm in this part of my training, it's a crucial time for me to trial my nutrition. So um, I can give you an example. This morning I went for a black time trial and I definitely had a little bit too much to eat before as I had a stitch after five kilometers. So by having done this in my training, I now know that I need to adapt that for my race day. Like I said, I'm actually training, like trialing my nutrition at the moment um, for speed workouts, but especially on my long runs. And this includes hydration, uh, pre like workout the breakfast that I will have before what I will have during and then what I will have after for a recovery so this is really important for me to figure out exactly the balance of having enough energy on a run but not being too full that I get either lethargic or a stick or a little ugh, a stitch or nauseous or a upset tummy or anything like that like you don't want to experience that on race day so you need to be so confident in your nutrition because you have trialed it all the way in your long runs the other thing while in marathon training um in terms of nutrition is i am currently eating so much more than usual um you burn a lot of energy when running, especially when you're running long distances and like really intense sessions. So at the moment, I'm definitely eating quite a bit. I am prioritizing carbohydrates to make sure that I am energized for my runs. I'm eating enough fats 
um, for my hormonal health. This is something that I've been lacking previously and that I've realized now is super, super, super important. And then to make sure that I get enough protein in with my muscles working so hard that I need to feel them to be able to recover and become a lot stronger. So this is just something that's really important in your building up to your marathon is not only what should you be eating pre like the week before your marathon or like the day of your marathon or anything but fueling your training is super 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 important and it's gonna feel weird to eat so much i mean i'm hungry as i'm sitting here and it's like an hour before lunch but it's it's just really important you cannot run your proper sessions if you're not fueled so that's it for our first marathon training video. I hope you guys enjoy that. I absolutely geek out when it comes to running. Um, so I'll see you guys in the next one. We've got a lot of training to do before then, and I'll just give you a brief update of where I am, a little bit more tips and tricks that you guys can apply to your own training. Um, but y'all, yeah, love to share this with you. So if you've got any questions, ask them in the comments. Can never say this ask them in the comment section below and i'll definitely get back to you but otherwise look out for our next video um, for some more running tips and tricks and updates